There's your mayor telling you, you're broke. Failure to maintain these corrections could cause the town in the future to meet statutory conditions that could result in financial emergency. Ah, my two inch pipe, the talk of a town of a hundred people here in Otter Creek. Not only is it two inches, it's silver lined. This is my actual two inch pipe right there, right there. It's the original. This two is inch the pipe. original. It was just cut out so the town of Otter Creek can't steal any more water from me and therefore any more money from me. Because in essence, what was happening is the town of Otter Creek has antiquated or old pumps, okay? So when a pump pumps water, it pushes that water through the pipe and through the meter. And unbeknownst to me, the town is actually installing meters with no check valve, no check valve. In other words, once water is pushed through, if there's no check valve, water can go back. And if it goes forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, then you can be charged for that same water multiple times, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times. Who the hells knows how many times? And my water bills only started to get higher when they started to shut down, put new filters in, and do all kinds of things over at the water treatment plant. Interesting that that's the only time and then they start charging me and other residents. Now you may be thinking, why aren't the other residents saying anything? Well, the other residents don't have two inch lines. I mean, that's not to say that their lines aren't important as well. And their lines are actually much closer to their house. If there's lines that close to their house, my line's this far from my house, which is why I need a two inch line. If we had the same size line that everybody else had in Otter Creek, we'd just get a little bit of a trickle coming out of our faucet. We actually need the water that goes through the line, but we just cut that line and I'm gonna show you why right here. Infamous two inch line here in Otter Creek, which I've got Lonnie and his crew out here. And this is the check valve that's going in. So unbeknownst to me, when my meter went in, I had no check valve. See that there? Mm -hmm. So what that does is that protects me when the pressure goes down in Otter Creek, then it doesn't siphon all my water back into the main line and then push it back through the meter. So this is the easy fix right here. Lonnie, how much am I paying for this? Check valve was 60, the other parts and the labor comes to 138. Okay, $138 right there to protect myself. And so uh, we got the best in the business on the job here today. Remember when I originally called you and I told you the meter was spinning backwards? Yes. Yeah, and so, yeah, so a rare occasion when that happens, but. Yeah, it's a rare occasion. It would take a break or for some reason for the system to be shut down. And then when we cut the line to repair, say, a leak or a break, mm -hmm. then the water in the lines drains back to our hole and we have to use a pump to pump out to, the hole. To get yeah. it right back to where it was. Yeah. So does anybody in Otter Creek have a check valve? None of the meters, right? Uh, that I'm not sure. I don't yeah. know. I, not that I know of, but... Now, now you know of one. I know of one. And you yes. know of another coming as well. Yeah. So yes, another yes, another resident has already requested check valves as well to make sure. Which the the system, the water system, has been down here quite a bit here in the past few months because they got the grant for the new filters and they're trying to dial everything in. And mm -hmm. that makes it all makes sense now to why when I told you, I, hey, it's spinning backwards, what's going on? Yeah, but I think the numbers go down when it's going backwards. Yeah. The numbers go down as well. That we didn't see. All we saw was the flow indicator going backwards. Okay, the little triangle. So the triangle, the flow meter. So it should go forwards if there's a leak in the property line. It wasn't going forwards. It was going backwards, and the numbers weren't going backwards in the meter. Lonnie is a professional at this. He's not just a professional plumber. He's literally a professional chemist, okay? This guy knows water, how to treat water, and that's all chemistry. And that's a well, well level above where my mind can go. And the only chemistry I know is between me and George. You still have confidence in the meter. You think the meter is still good? I think so, yes. Okay. Yep, I think it is. Two inch pipe cut out right there. Can you hear me, George? No, speak you, louder. I'm as loud as I possibly can in my two inch pipe. Oh, now I can hear you. Let's take a look at our meter. This is our box right here for our meter. Interesting that once we started figuring something was wrong that um, 
our meter no longer is having issues there, huh? Mm. Now, you may be thinking, why, Jeremy? Why go through all of this? The simple answer is this. The town of Otter Creek is stealing. Yes, stealing from not only us, every resident in Otter Creek. And under whose authority? The mayor, Russell Meeks, with the town clerk. That would be Mary DeGroote. And you may be thinking, Jeremy, what do the people in Otter Creek think about that? Well, some are thankful that we're helping, but everybody outside of Otter Creek, look, here's a message I just got. It says, uh, this is from Danny. It says, oh boy, here we go. Uh, keep up the good work. I own property in Yankee Town, live in Akala. Uh, used to work for Chiefland Fire Rescue for five years. We were contacted for fire protection. Otter Creek has always been a unique situation. Even been to your house on medical calls before you bought it. Keep up the good work. Don't let up. Those citizens are counting on you. Nothing has changed in that town for decades and nothing will change until their feet are held to the fire. They're not used to be held accountable. The next step is for you to run for the council seat. While George and I have absolutely no plans to run for the council seat, all we wanted to do was to move to Otter Creek and live a peaceful life in the woods. Here is my meter now. As far as I know, I am the only individual in the town of Otter Creek protecting myself from the town from stealing from me. Every single individual in the town of Otter Creek should have a check valve and the town should be mandating that it's put in. If they're running water and they don't have a check valve, not only can the water keep going back and forth, contaminants can get in their lines. And there's one thing we know about Otter Creek water, it's contaminated enough already. The funny part of all of this is the town is trying, are those chickens behind me? Mm -hmm. Okay, they're laughing too. See, they find the humor in this. The town being Russell Meeks and Mary DeGroote and those council members that support those two are trying to cover up this deception and trying to cover up this theft. They've gone as far as to actually connect with a local online nonprofit reporter news organization except it's not news it's absolutely not reporting it is a one side biased pro russell pro mary without contact i'm laughing too i am <laughs> laughing too okay that's pigeon looking and chicken that's what we actually have been doing when we've been reading this stuff we've been literally laughing like pigeon looking chicken we have been cracking up because this is a joke a joke. This isn't reporting. This isn't journalism. This isn't anything. And right now, if you're going, hey, uh, Jeremy, I don't even know what you're talking about. Listen, we've got an entire playlist on here called Otter Creek. Go click on it. You can see everything happening in Otter Creek. Come to find out, we actually saw this man this weekend. So George and I went to the benefit for the Ark, which mm -hmm. I now reside on the board serving for the Ark as well, which you'll hear a whole lot more of that coming up in the future. And so George and I went to a benefit. It's the Wild Hog Canoe Race. It's like the 41st one in, uh, in succession. And we actually have some of the old, the old planks and mm -hmm. planks, and we're holding those for the new Ark building to be built. And as soon as we get out of the car, we come across an individual, and it's an old, gangly-looking guy, and he has a self-made lanyard that said press. And George and I, being George and I, we were like, hey. And just smiled and passed by. And then George looks over at me, and George, you said what? He looked at you like, like, oh, no. He had that look on his face, and I just, I didn't think anything of it. And so we went to go find the folks that work at the Lark and let them know that we were there. So later on, what we actually found out, he was there asking questions about me specifically and trying to do a trash story or a smear story on me. And the individuals he was interviewing had nothing but positive things to say, which is funny because if he's a reporter, here I am standing right, right in front of him. He definitely knows who you are. And he said nothing. nothing. Nothing at all. And you should be asking yourself, why? Why is this happening? I'm about to show you why as we go through the audit of Otter Creek. The name of that news reporter, well, fake news reporter, 
not even, you can't even call it news and you can't even call it reporting. You can call it, I don't know what you call it, but journaling. I know what I call him. Journaling. No, that, okay, he was journaling. He was journaling for Russ and uh, for Mary. Uh, Mary, Mary, male is scary. Story time. Yeah. Um, his name is Terry Witless. Witless. It's Terry Witless. Witless. No wits whatsoever. How do you walk right in front of a man right after you just asked individuals to try and dig out anything negative you can about him and not say a word? <laughs> ask a single question. Witless. Now, let's look at why Otter Creek is where they are. This is a audit, an independent third-party audit for 2021. We've shared with you multiple times that this is 2021. We shared the board meeting where this was actually passed out and board members weren't even looking at this, let alone getting the information. One board member didn't even open it, okay? What year this are we 20, in? 2021. We're in 2023 now. Halfway okay? through 2023. All right, we're halfway through 2023. We're finally getting an independent audit from 2021. All right. And when did this all start? I put in my two inch line in 2021. Mary in April, it's actually April 30th, 2021, started pulling numbers and saying, you owe this, you owe this. Why? Well, I'm about to share with you. Let's just breeze through here just a little bit here in this audit report, okay? Now, the one thing I do want to share with you, whenever you get an audit report such as this, mm -hmm. all right, this is an official CPA. I have an official CPA company that does everything for me. They use what's called GAAP, G-A-A-P, General Accepted Accounting Principles. Okay, it's a, it's a standard all over with all CPAs. Now, here's one thing they say and they warn up front. The performing of the audit to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the fiscal or financial statements are free from material and misstatement. What they're saying is this. If you don't give us the right information, Town of Otter Creek, or you skewed the information, Town of Otter Creek, all we can do is basically make an audit based on what you've shared with us. Okay, so it's easy to trick an audit. I mean, you can you can give statements and you can and you can uh, hide money in this line item and this line item and this line item, and all you're doing is giving them documents, which is uh, something we're going to talk about here because they weren't too happy with how the town handled this. But what they're saying is they can only do an audit based off of what you provide them with. That's what they're saying. Okay, you provide me with false information or you're lying about something. I'm, I'm preparing something based on what you've given me. Okay, so think of it like a cook. If you give a cook good ingredients, you're going to get a good meal. If you give a cook bad ingredients, you're going to get a bad meal. But you can try and hide those ingredients and you can spice it up and be like, well, here it is. And it can be a mediocre meal. What we have here is a mediocre audit, but I'm going to address some of those things with you here in these pages. By the way, 70% of the town's net position reflects its investment in capital assets, land, building, infrastructure, and equipment. What this is saying is when you hear some of these big numbers or see some of these big numbers in an audit, it's basically saying they own land, they own a building, they own equipment, a lawnmower, things along those, those, those lines. 70% of the town's capital, it's just in stuff, okay? It's not liquid. Liquid meaning you can pull it out of your pocket and you can, you can actually use it and spend it right now. So I think that's important to share this. 70% of the capital assets is in land, buildings, infrastructure, and equipment mowers, the town hall, uh, the ridiculousness of whatever that is, what we call it a library. All right. This is specifically 2021 revenue. This is revenue on the water. Okay. They made $32,031 as they invoiced the town residents for water. 31, excuse me, $32,031. That was the revenue. Total expenses for the water. All this other stuff doesn't matter. We're focusing on the water. Expenses, $41,710. Whenever you see parentheses, that means you're in the red or it's a deficit you owe. You went under, 
basically with this says, you're in the negative. They lost $9,679 change in net position, $9,679. Why would a town lose almost $10,000 in their water supply to that town? And then a new individual from the north comes in and they want to start pulling out numbers. Look at this. This is why business type activities decrease the town's net position by almost $10,000, $9,679. You understand this, right? If we're going just based on water, the town is broke. Now, the town's almost broke as it is anyway. I found an article that uh, was reported December of 2021, which quoted Meeks. It says... Meeks Russell has, Meeks? Russ the Sus yes, Meeks? It says Meeks has lived in Otter Creek for more than 50 years. And quote unquote, it says, we just need good water, he said. The water that we've got is almost impossible to treat. It is to where to where you could use it. Meek said that the well in Otter Creek only goes down to 60 feet, but the good water, if there is any, would be 1,500 feet deep. And so he says, we have 70 water meters that we rely on to take care of our water plant. Adding that, he feels bad that the city has just raised water rates. He says, we are going in the hole. Huh. That was a hard thing to do. Ooh, there's your mayor telling you, you're broke and you'll never have good water. And some way he still is getting voted in. I got a question for you. How long can you operate in this world with spending more money than you actually make? Not long at all. Eventually you'll tank. And okay. Go under. All right. You go under. Unless... You find a good looking, handsome guy from up north that uh, is really good with business and numbers that isn't scared of math. You mean a Yankee? Did you just call me a Yankee? <laughs> I did. Okay. I, I guess I'm a Yankee. Uh, by the way, Georgia's doing fine as far as her financial position. The town, not so good. All right, let's go through a few more things. A lot of this is going over their... There, this is a lot of investment. You see some of these bigger numbers. This is a lot of investment in different different grants. So they've gotten water grants, and this this over overviews the water grant grants. It overviews the building, the land depreciation of that as such. But basically, in a nut, in a nutshell, here's where I say net position of governing activities. This is what they had to work with in 2021. And they had a lot of things and a lot of expenses. So let's go over here. Okay. Here we go again. Total operating revenue for the water, $32,031. $32,031. Total operating expenses, $41,710. Operating loss, that is a loss, $9,679. Now, you tell me, George, why would Russ the Sus, uh, Mary, Mary, mail is now scary if somebody sent her a calculator, which I would think she would be thankful for since she doesn't know how to do math, but why would a town all of the sudden go, oh man, we need to charge a new, a new person more money than anybody else? Because they are broke. All right, let's look at this. Risk, this is the town risk management. Now, whenever you're doing accounting, again, GAAP, General accepted, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles and Practices, uh, we're looking at risk as well. So insurance uh, against losses are, boom, boom, boom. What's, one the biggest, what's one of the biggest, what's one of the biggest areas of risk that Town Hall and Otter Creek has? Dishonesty. Oh, oh my goodness. You think there might be some dishonesty in Otter Creek as they're stealing? Listen, if you're from Otter Creek and you're watching this, they're not only stealing from me. I mean, you don't have to be a genius to figure out they're stealing from you. And you keep putting the same people in these positions if you voted Russell Meeks, if you're allowing... The town clerk works for you, not for Russell Meeks. If you're allowing Mary DeGroote to stay in that position, you're allowing these people to steal from you. It is literally that simple. It is so easy to see here. And yet, in a, in a, in a council meeting, all we did was the council who's responsible for all the fiscal things, which they never get a P&L, they, the, they never get the budget. All they did was just open a few pages. Risk management, huge issue here. 
Huge issue. As a matter of fact, those individuals that serve on the council and marry the group, the town clerk, they should be bonded. And why do they get bonded? In case they get sued. And why are they going to get sued? Well, Mary wants to tell reporters because of a funding issue with water. No, it's 100% about theft. It is 100% about theft, and somebody's going to take care of it in this town. So if we keep going through just a little bit more here, again, some of this is just stuff that uh, will probably bore even you, George. You like numbers, right? I do. Like, I love numbers. I love charts, love pies, love graphs. All right. This is to the mayor and the members of the town council, which I guarantee you there's only one person who's read this so far. You're looking at him. The mayor probably didn't read this. The town council, I guarantee you, didn't read this. This is saying these are the negative things that we have that you need to correct immediately. Financial statement preparation. Uh, well, there's a couple different things. Number one, this is page 44. By the way, you can get this audit report. You can you can get this online. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can Public get this. Information. Public information. Chapter 119, Florida Statutes. So this is internal control over financial reporting and financial statement preparation. And what the CPA firm says is there is a significant deficiency in, or a combination of deficiencies in internal control. And um, basically, in a nutshell, management's response is this. So the firm is saying, you got a problem. All right, George. I can't read upside down or upside right. Can you? Mm -hmm. We agree. Management's response. This is Russell Meeks and this is Mary DeGroote. We agree because I promise you the council has no idea about this response. Council has no idea. Which, why are we voting in people that actually aren't doing the job that you vote them in for? Nobody knows about this response except for Russell and maybe Mary. Maybe it's just Mary and Russell. Uh, well, the accounting firm knows, but now you all know as well. Here's their response. We agree with your findings. We're a very small government. And we have used our available resources to employ competent bookkeeping. You know what? This is not easy upside down. I know Mary can't do math, but I can't read upside down. Although I did get a couple lines. I'm going to do it this way. You could see what it says. Mm -hmm. So management's response is this. We agree that to, with this finding. And we're a very small government, and we have used our available resources to employ competent bookkeepers who maintains, by the way, the bookkeeping is the, the third-party firm, to employ competent bookkeepers who maintains excellent accounting records and provides accurate monthly financial reports. That's odd because nobody ever receives them. Nobody who does a records request has received them. I've been asking for records for three years now. I've received one record the last time I paid my bill with, bill with Mary. All right. Accurate monthly financial reports prepared generally on the cash basis. We likewise have confidence in our audit firm to utilize these records and prepare annual financial statements in the required format and with all associated note disclosures. Both staff and the town council review the annual reports. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, this is too much. This is too much. Now, listen, you understand that for the past year, every town council meeting has been live streamed. There is footage. The council does not review the reports. This is a bold face lie. The reports aren't even given. That's a constant tension between Don and Russell. Russell goes, here's the bills. Can we vote to pay the bills? Ru Don goes, we have no bills. I showed this in a previous video already. Again, you can go back and look at all of this in Otter Creek. I'm, I don't want to show the same thing over and over and over again. All that will be used in the court, okay? But this is the biggest joke in the world. Town Council has no idea where the finances are. None. They don't review it. They don't do anything. Russell doesn't report it. Mary can't even figure out how to print it off. What in the world is this woman doing in this job? All right, so let's go back to the biggest joke here in town. Both staff and the town council review the annual financial reports and have the opportunity to ask the auditor any questions regarding the report prior to its presentation. Are you kidding me? The council didn't receive this report until they walked in last in the last meeting, which is on this channel. One council member never even opened the manual. 
Not only that, the other council members don't have the education or the know-how to even understand what they're looking at. Now, I wish they did, and I would be more than happy, we have the school now, I would be more than happy to run financial stewardship seminars for our town. I have no problem doing that. This is one of the biggest bold faces lies, and it's all on video. It's all captured on video. And they just, like the people in Otter Creek, it just blows my mind. As soon as the camera goes on, they incriminate themselves further and further and further and further and further. They open their mouth and incriminate themselves further. They, they won't do things that they legally are supposed to do, and they incriminate themselves further. But this, I'll go on, okay, because this is the town's formal response. The report is formally presented by the auditor at the scheduled meeting at the town council. That actually did happen. At this time... This is the town's response to the negative things that the auditor is saying. At this time, we do not believe it would be a justifiable expense to employ another accountant on either a part-time or a full-time basis to prepare the annual f fiscal or financial statements. We thus accept this required disclosed finding and will continue to monitor this situation in the future. You think you ain't got the money now? Wait till I get done with you. Probably the smartest thing in the world you should have done is gotten an accountant. You should have a CPA on staff. All right, let's just keep going. Let's keep going because I'm so tired of this. All right, here's one of the biggest issues right here that the accountant, the accountant says this. You are on the brink of a fiscal emergency. Your town is deteriorating with its funds. And here's where it says it. Deterioration fiscal conditions. From our audit procedures in the years prior, we found that the following conditions, which together comprise deterioration financial conditions, as is defined by Chapter 10.550, Rules of the Auditor General. Now, be gracious with me. I'm reading upside down, okay? This is not easy. I have a huge light in my eyes. All I can see is star, like when you look at the sun, and I'm reading upside down. If I can get through that entire paragraph with all that going on, why can't Mary do math? Why can't Mary open her own mail without calling the sheriff? Which, by the way, the sheriff was here at the schoolhouse. I'm going to share that with you in a second. But here we go. All right, 2021, they were in the negative, $9,697. 2020, they were in the negative, $19,866. 2019, no information. 2018, they were in the negative or in the red, $14,431. 2017, they were in the red, $14,313. 2016, they were in the negative, in the red, $18,773. Finances should be continued to be closely monitored during subsequent years to ensure that these objections that these objectives continue to be met. Failure to maintain these corrections could cause the town in the future to meet statutory conditions that could result in financial emergency. You think there isn't a financial emergency here in the town of Otter Creek? They're going to court. And what money are they going to spend? Well, that's a good question. The nice thing is, we don't call the sheriff, George, for emergencies unless there's an actual emergency, right? Mm -hmm. If we get mail, we don't call the sheriff. But it is comforting to know with all of this going on in Otter Creek that there are some incredible individuals that serve on the Levy County Sheriff's Office. And they're still checking up on us. Watch this. We were actually in our Bible study on Zoom with all of our friends in our Bible group up north. And why we're in our Bible study and why we're worshiping and why we're praying with our friends up north. We were praying specifically for Otter Creek. The entire group was praying specifically for Otter Creek. And here comes the sheriff making sure we're safe and okay.